Alright, so what's going on guys? Panasbip2 here, bringing you another guide on League of Legends. So, I know I don't really upload gameplays and stuff like that, because I feel like when you watch a gameplay, you tend to try to do exactly like they do, and you don't develop your own type of, like, learning. And if you want to know, like, if you're not sure if whether or not you can do the things or not, go check out a pro... Uh, pro replay N definitely not one for me but from like an LCS play or OGN play or anything like that so uh, let's get it started guys uh, I'm gonna start out with what I'm gonna be going over and that will be the champion pool laning phase lane synergy roaming positioning and mechanics so these are the six main things that you're gonna want to learn as an AD carry or if you're like just trying to brush up on some old like the basic tools that you need to uh, play AD carry well and these are the six things that will help you get out of whatever elo you're in um, once you get to diamond one it's pretty much how your team works so first off let's go over champion pool so this is mainly for those who are just learning or those who are intermediate or who are trying to like learn some new things or even the advanced players just trying to brush up so your champion pool Learn the strongest and best AD slash marksman champions for the given patch. So in 4.6, the uh, strongest champions are now are Jinx, Draven, and Misfortune. Um, all three of those champions provide a really high damage output early, mid, and late game, while not being able or while like still giving a strong presence in the game. Or what did I just say? No, sorry. So they all provide a really strong damage throughout the entire game without falling off. That's what I meant to say. So, you're, so if you don't like the strongest champions, try to learn at least one to two of them, at least one, and master at least one or two more, and those will be your three champions that you're going to spam as AD carry when you are playing AD carry. And just in case you're going to want to decently or like learn well two more champions or two to three, depending on how well your memory is. And so I'm going to give my opinion on the three best AD carries that are good throughout the entire game. Um, Caitlyn, early, mid, and late game, she just strives. Early game, she can push and outfarm you just because of her 650 range, while other AD carries only have 550 or even like 500, 525. So she provides a really strong poke while being able to outfarm everybody. Next up is Draven. Draven just has an insane amount of, um, like, early game damage and he teaches you how to take advantage of that and Ezreal he teaches you skill shots and position, uh, positioning during all ends and team fights so like when you are playing Ezreal the only issue with him is that late game if you don't really get fed in the I want to say really early or early mid game then he gets a little bit hard but then because you're not as strong so you need to farm up and hopefully you'll be able to do more damage but ultimately play around and see who you like Alright, next up is laning phase. Laning phase is the entire fa phase that you're in the lane. It, it's, it is what it sounds like. So in winning lanes, ward and get a strong gold and farm lead and take objectives with your support and your jungler if you guys are trying to take um, like dragon or really like 20 minute baron, which is rare. But yeah, ultimately ward so you don't get ganked because a losing lane will ping uh, and ask for a gank. So Strong gold and farm lead, and take objectives, like towers. For neutral lanes, try to freeze lane, uh, which means keeping the lane fairly in the center, uh, which means like you and your enemy will be where you are, where the very first wave comes. And if you have the advantage, like you have a stronger um, engage, then go in and try to get that advantage, or you can try to ping for a gank to get that advantage, and you could hopefully take dragon from that. And... Losing lanes, farm under tower, ping for a gank, and definitely try not to engage if they can kill you under tower. And help ward, even if you're an AD carry. Well, this goes for all lanes, actually. Winning, neutral, or losing. Help ward. Not only will your support be able to get their items faster, but it'll help you in the long run from ganks, anything like that. Probably the, the actually not probably, it's the most important is your farm. And without farming, it's too hard to get fed if you don't farm as well. Farming may be hard and boring at first, but you'll soon find out how much easier it gets getting a gold lead with farm than risking kills or feeding. So, instead of trying to go in for that first blood for that extra like 400 gold or whatever it is, then you could just 
farm, 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 and by say 15 minutes, and you have 120 farm compared to the enemy who's like one in one with like 80 farm, 90 farm, you'll still have that lead even if you died once. All right, guys, so lane synergy. Lane synergy means like how well you and your support work together. Um, there's three types of lanes that I've noticed or that I like to um, put them in and categorize them in. It's CC lanes, poke lanes, and farm lanes. So CC lanes is crowd control lanes, which is having the most like area of effect damage and stuff like that. So Varus with his ult, Sona with her ult, Graves who has a really good Q and ult, um, like area of effect damage. Same with Leona who can engage from a good distance away while having that really good ult. Misfortune and Sona. Sona can lock them down. Misfortune can ult while they're locked down. And those are really good CC lanes. Those are just examples you can play around and see what you feel is the best for CC. If you do, leave them in the comments. So poke lanes are lanes that will just poke you over and over again. And then while they're still keeping good lead. And this will help um, keep them safe. Or keep you safe if you're playing as these. And it'll helpfully... You'll probably win more. You'll win more trades with this lane, with this type of lane, than you will the other two. So Caitlyn and Sona, Caitlyn with her insane range, Sona with her Qs, Draven with her with his early insane, like early game damage. Same with Thresh, who has really good hooks early game. Um, Ezreal and Karma, Ezreal and Karma depend solely on the player who has the um solely depend on more mechanics than the other two in poke lanes but if you are if you and your support are good enough this lane will help will just completely obliterate the enemy so farm lanes caitlin and sona so caitlin and sona um i put that twice under both poke and farm that's because caitlin and sona um if you're losing you could just farm as caitlin forever and then sona just provides you with that health and that cc stun in order to get away um vein soraka so vein scales strongest into the late game and the mid game so, having a Soraka there for heals and mana, ju just to get the farm, is the best. The only issue is that there is no peel if there is a gank, un unless you count like the one silence that she has and the two heals. So those ultimately are really good. Um, and Tristana and Sona. So Tristana and Sona, they scale. Tristana scales really strong into the late game. Um, so she outranges Caitlyn once she gets to level 12, and at level 18, she has the farthest range for an AD. Sona also has a really far range, at, even at level 1 with her poke. And the two champions, Vayne and Shasana, you notice that they're in the farm lanes. Because those two champions um, scale the uh, strongest to the late game. So farming would be the safest and most efficient way to get fed. But play around with bot link combinations and, and what works with your best playstyle. Roaming is an AD carry. Never roam if you're behind in farm or kills unless you're going for a dragon after a successful gank. So if you go, if your jungler goes in for a gank and they fail and you only like blow one summoner but they still have a lot of health, going for dragon is not a good idea because what could happen is their mid lane, their jungler, and their bot lane could come in because they never recall. They just burn, the bot lane only burns summoner, so then it becomes a 4v3. It could become a 4v4 with your mid lane, but if your mid lane is too busy farming and you're stuck in that dragon pit 3v4, it's not going to end out well. You might lose dragon. You might lose the game. Um, after taking first tower, try to push it a little bit more while warding in their jungle. The tri bush, if you're spawning bot or, um, or if you're spawning top, and uh, the white bush. I don't know how to really call it the white bush below the the bush below white. Why if you spawn bot? Um, then you can help mid if necessary. It all depends on the game, guys. So um, you're gonna have to see what will be the mo you have to stop and think what will be the most beneficial for this game. If you're being pushed against and you lose your first tower, f just farm, farm, and farm. Don't do not roam unless you need to be in a team fight. Um, and after a team fight, help push, and then instead of recalling and say you're at like one fourth health where you still have good enough to farm go ahead and farm just keep on farming until you get back to where you were to be even or to get a lead and always ward your river and around their jungle for general idea of enemy positioning um oh and stick to your support um sticking to your start to your support is really important especially since they will provide you with heals mana 
peel or anything you need in case you run into someone while roaming. So positioning. Positioning is where you are in a team fight and how and that depends and your positioning will like control how much damage you'll be able to do during a team fight or an engagement. So playing ADs like Draven, Kaelin, and Varus and Tristana all have the ability to do damage while staying safely in the back of the fight. Never be the front line of the fight. The front line of your fight should be your top lane, your jungler, or if you have a tanky mid who goes all in at the beginning of the fight. So always, and also try to stay within heal range of your support or peel range of like your allies. So if you have a Thresh who has um, Flay and a Lantern, stay within range of them. Or if you have someone like a Wukong who has a really strong knockup, try to stay near them unless they are your front line. In that case, stay in the back. And keep your distance from the fight, but always stay close enough to do damage. So that might sound like, wait, how do you do that? You need to be far, but then you need to stay within range. And that's where the tricky part comes in. You have to find right as soon, the split second that the team fight starts, you need to find out who are they focusing and where can I be to kill their tanks, their carries, and everybody in between. Um, so in the end, you never want to get greedy. At the end of a team fight, um, during the team fight, poke and try to hit whoever you can. Don't go directly for their carries, especially if their front line is a really, really strong front line like Nasus and Malphite. Those two will just completely ruin your day. And always wait for your tanks or the front line to engage. You, as an AD carry, never engage unless you're like 10 levels ahead. Other than that, you never want to be the first to engage. So, I feel like I've been going over only things to do when you're winning. Um, if you're engaged on or, um, by, like, say, a Malphite or a Nasus, use your summoners unless you have an escape like Ezreal or Caitlyn or Shasana. But if you still, let's say, you're being slowed and you get and you like use your escape to get away, and they're catching up to you, just burn your summoners if you still need more space. All right, so I think this is my last slide. Yeah, I think it is. Um, the most important thing for a team fight is your mechanics. This will help in both team fights and engagements. Um, mechanics. When I say when I keep saying this word mechanics, what does it mean? I'm talking about how well you know how to use your champion. Like how well can you farm with that champion? How well can you use your abilities and stuff like that? So farming the me uh, farming mechanic is probably one of the it is the most important thing. I said that earlier in the commentary. It's the most important thing. Farming will get you fed without feeding. And yeah. So learn how your champ works and learn any tricks you can to do stay ugh, to stay safe. Wow. Typo. To stay safe and or kill the enemy. So Vayne has a really... So the reason I'm using Vayne as an example is because she has a really high learning curve. So mastering her would give you a strong mechanics on her only when it comes to abilities. But her farming, since it's not the strongest, she will also help. She also has a different type of farming, but she has it's generally the same. So try out every champion, when I say champion I mean AD, at least once and play those that you like and master them. So like two to three champions that you really love, master them. A good goal to set for yourself anywhere in the lower elo, from bronze 5 to gold 1 to even platinum, is at least 75 to 100. 75 is like, you shouldn't even be trying to get to 75. Um, 100 farm, it's pretty sh hard to get to, um, but a lot of the prof uh, professional players can, because, well, that's their job. And hitting 75, 80, or even 70, it's not going to hinder you, but you need to realize that you just need to have a really strong lead if you're going to be farming poorly. And... I'm on my last slide, guys. Never give up. Always remember that the great AD carries like Doublelift, Cop, Wild Turtle, and Chaos, all these great AD carries in the NA scene that everybody looks up to, they started out just like you. They started out not knowing how to play the game, not knowing what to do, but they took their time to get better and improve. And if you devote the same time and effort, so can you. It will take time. I can almost guarantee you, it will take tons and tons of time. But don't give up at the first sign of trouble because pulling through will ultimately make you a better player and you'll learn things throughout your experience trying to get better. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this really long commentary. 
and thanks for watching guys if you want more guides like this for like top lane mid lane support jungle go ahead and leave a comment below uh leave a like and don't forget to subscribe guys my name is panda ah, pandas are people too sorry talking for a long time does that or justin and i'm out guys peace